Hey guys, another Magic the Gathering video brought to you by the Age of Chaos. Today's topic is converted mana cost. Some cards refer to converted mana cost. Some players talk about it, though when players talk about it, they generally shorten it to just cost. If someone asks you, how much did that card cost? Generally speaking, they're not asking how much you paid for the card, rather how much mana you have to spend in order to play it. So, put quite simply, converted mana cost is going to be up here in your top right corner. It's going to be the total number of symbols that you see plus any number. So, the Healer's Hawk converted mana cost is one. In this case, one planes. So, not bad. Generally speaking, cheap creatures like this are going to be fairly simplistic, though a 1 1 flying lifelink, pretty good. Nice little pings and get you some damage in early at the start. But generically speaking, your lands each, you know, they tap for one mana each. So let's put some land out here. So um, in a case like this, you wouldn't have enough to play the Healer's Hawk because though you have four mana, none of it is a Plains. Sorry, Plains. So Healing Hawk, gone. Okay, so let's get into a little higher mana cost here. The Watcher in the Mist you note has two island symbols and then a three. So the converted mana cost will be five. And of that five, two of them have to be islands. And the other three could be anything. So if we wanted to play our Watcher in the Mist, this is four mana total. We'd need at least another mountain. So we have three mountains we can tap and two islands that satisfies the three and the two and then we could play the watcher in the mist so converted mana cost five I'm gonna look at a couple of these these mana costs obviously a little if you're catching on by now the goblin electromancer has to be paid with one island and one mountain so we'd have to tap an island and a mountain in order to be able to play him and Ionize costs one of any color plus an island and a mountain. Now there are card effects like the Goblin Electromancer that says instant and sorceries you, cost, you cast cost one colorless less to cost. So if Goblin Electromancer was on the field already, making this is an instant spell and it would be one less. So you could in essence cover that and say, hey, I can now play Ionize for one island and one mountain. So boom, same mana, Ionize can be played. Now, when considering converted mana cost, you have to look at the cost, the mana cost of the card versus what it can do and how much mana you're going to have out. I'll take the Murmuring Mystic, for instance. Converted mana cost four, power one, toughness five, so good defender, and then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 bluebird illusion creature token with flying. So his main purpose is just to create those bird tokens to give you a lot of flyers and a little flyover damage. But he's not going to be doing much attacking on his own, but he may stick around for a while with that 5 toughness. So you have to decide if you want him in your deck, if it's worth paying the 4 mana and what else you could have in there for that much mana to say, hey, I'll take the Murmuring Mystic, or I'll leave him out and put something else in. So, the Vernadi Shieldmate here, his converted mana symbols is a one, and then this little half symbol with a green and a white. So you have a forest and a plains. What that means is you can spend one colorless and either a green mana or a white mana to play him. So, if we had out here... If that was our mana, two islands and a forest, I could tap an island and a forest, satisfying the green half of his mana cost, and cast the shield mate, and that would be fine. So he counts as both a green and a white creature, regardless of which one you use to cast him. So I used a green mana to cast him, but he is a green and white creature. For purposes of identification. Now to help with your mana cost there are some non-basic lands that could do more than one thing. 
as a, for instance, these guild gates from Ravnica, this, the Demir guild gate could add blue or black mana, and the Izzet guild gate could add blue or red mana. So those are useful in multicolored decks, or if you're just finding yourself with a couple of extra cards, say it's a mostly blue deck, and you know you've got some black mana you'll need, toss in some guild gates, and then you have that available to you. And then there are some land cards, like the Gateway Plaza. Um, it, it takes a second to keep out because it comes in tap, so you can't use it. And you have to pay one colorless to keep it out, or it has to be sacrificed. But you can get a mana of any color, so that helps out a lot of decks. So there you go. Quick rundown on converted mana cost, what paying that cost looks like for a few different kinds of cards, and how to produce some mana using things other than your basic lands. So hope you enjoyed that video and hope it helps you build a nice deck brought to you by the Age of Chaos.